All right, hello and welcome to RimWorld. So, uh, as you can probably tell by my thumbnail, this is a uh, introduction to RimWorld, kind of, and how it's uh, how to play it, how to get started out. So, it's kind of be kind of a let's play thing. So, uh, it'll be kind of fun. I uh, I will start off in just a sec, but right now I wanted to show you something. Now, this game is moddable. So, uh, we are actually going to take these mods off for now, because, uh, except for the core, because that is the, just the game itself, the vanilla version. But maybe in the future, if this series gets, uh, enough views, we might go to, we might start modding it, uh, do some other things with it. But for now, we're just going to keep it basic, because this is the first episode, and, uh, let me start by uh, showing you guys how to create a world. Now basically what this does is uh, it lets you create a seed or a world and a seed is basically just the name of a world and if you retype a seed in, if you remember a seed or you found a really cool seed on the internet that you really like or a world if you want me to call it that, you can just type it in in here and then uh, get the same world again which is kind of neat. Now you can uh, choose the size of it. I always like to choose the biggest. Uh, don't know why. I don't really know what this function does yet. Because uh, this game is still in alpha. So uh, a lot could change. But it's very well put together for the state that it's in. So I am just going to randomize this a couple times. Click it multiple times. And uh, click generate. So basically what this option does is it allows you to just look at the world and generate a world that you like and uh, I'm sort of confused about what this is for because there's not a whole bunch of uses for it yet um, it would have been a lot simpler to do something else but I know a lot of games do something like this and I'll show you what I mean in just a sec so uh, let me just save this and finish it so that is not actually how you start a new game <laughs> for some reason um, what you actually have to do is click new colony and uh, it'll first come up with this option and it'll uh, ask you uh, what kind of you might be kind of freaked out like why are these people here <laughs> what do I do with them no these are just uh, I don't know why he put the creator of this game put faces here but these are just AI types types for the uh, in-game AI for the NPCs so uh, there's a uh, start with Cassandra classic basically what this does is well I might as well just read it to you Cassandra creates story events on a steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. Uh, this is one of them. Let's read this one. Uh, Phoebe gives a lot of time between disasters to relax and build your colony, but beware. If she's set at a high challenge scale, she'll hit as hard as she... Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> she'll hit as hard as anyone. And then, Randy Random. Uh... Randy doesn't follow rules. He'll generate random events. He doesn't care if they make a story triumph for utter hopelessness. It's all drama to him. So uh, this is just what you want. So if you want events to be generated in random order and don't care, pick this dude. If you want to build a base, pick this chick. And if you want, I usually do Cassandra Classic. It makes stuff harder, but or not Cassandra Classic. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, it is Cassandra Classic. My bad. And then this is actually the difficulty. So, uh, challenge is sort of normal, and then you have lower to where nothing goes on. And you, uh, if you have this game, you can just go through and read through the descriptions. Uh, so, I'm just going to pick on challenge because this isn't my first time playing it, but this game is kind of difficult. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, you, it, just weird stuff happens so I'm just gonna keep it on challenge and then you go to next uh, then this is actually where you pick the world that we created earlier you uh, I, I have had a couple worlds before but uh, I think at the time of this recording it is the uh, 19th yeah it's the newest one up here so that's the world its name is media I forgot to look up uh, when I created the world to see what it was, it would have set it on the top. So I'm just going to select the world that we made. And as you can see, here it is. And this is where you actually uh, uh, pick the site to where you want to build. 
So uh, as you can see, it's all different colors. So it's uh, they're actually biomes. So as you can see, it says Tundra biome not yet implemented because this game is an alpha. So I'm not surprised. Let's see what this biome is. A boreal forest biome, which is also not implemented yet. Um, let's see what else is here. A uh, desert biome. A temperate forest biome. Tropical rainforest biome, which are not implemented yet. Um, let's see what, what else is here. Uh, let's see. Arid shrubland biome. And this is another desert. So, uh, basically, what you have to do for now is you gotta pick a biome that actually works in the game so far. I usually don't like deserts because there's not a lot of farmland there and it's hard to kind of start out with. And I usually like to start off near the mountains, so uh, I'm pretty sure that the more mountains there are, the uh, the more mountains there are in the area. But what you do is you basically pick a square, and uh, I'm going to pick right here. That looks like a promising spot. Uh, I'm just going to click on advance here. So this is this allows you to do the map size, and uh, let's just set it to the highest we can possibly do. Uh, it says, warning, performance may degrade at larger map sizes, unless your computer is quite powerful. Um, I have a quite powerful computer, so I think I'm going to go with that. Um, well, actually, I don't know. I think we might want to keep it a bit smaller. Let's, uh, let's put it on large. Uh, simply because I don't want to have too big of a world and uh, have crazy stuff going on. This is a, kind of a beginner's guide, so I'll just keep it simple um, alright so and here is where you first make your first three characters so by default it just generates three random ones for you but you can also randomize them uh, these are their skills there uh, if you notice some skills are not implemented yet I think there's only one so far I think crafting yeah crafting is implemented but artistic it's uh, it says this skill does nothing in this unfinished version of RimWorld. So basically, I don't like to pay attention to this skill. I just rather find people that don't have anything to do with that. But uh, my first characters. Uh, oh, let's start off with this one. Why not? Uh, I'll just go over what all these things mean. So basically, the higher their stats, the more efficient they are at doing stuff, and the faster. Uh, yeah, basically just the more efficient they are. Um, so as you can see, this guy has nine in research, so he'll be good at researching new technologies and stuff. Also, what you want to keep in mind is their flames. Um, a small flame means that they have a passion for it. And that means they'll uh, increase, their, their skill will uh, increase faster than if they didn't have a passion for it. If you, they have two flames on something, that means they have a burning passion. It will increase a lot quicker. So, uh, as you can see, this guy has a burning passion for construction and a burning passion for medicine. So these skills will uh, in level up really quickly. Um, then, let's see what else is here. Um, okay, this is just their backstory. Um, this just you don't really have to pay attention to that too much I guess it kinda tells them what they are then you can see if he's a male or a female right here and then you can see their age uh, kind of irrelevant just kinda adds to the game alright and then there are things that they are of course incapable of this uh, this man is incapable of cleaning and doing plant work so you gotta keep that in mind. Sometimes there'll be people with a lot of things they can't do. Some people can't do intellectual things or dumb things like cleaning and uh, hauling things. <laughs> They're kind of useless. So you gotta keep an eye out for that. Then they have traits. Uh, traits are basically bonuses that they get or negatives. It can be. They're kind of like perks, kind of. Um, so if you go over this one, this one is bloodlust. And Andy gets a rush from hurting people, and he'll never get, and never minds the sight of blood or death. So this guy will be really good for uh, defensive purposes and uh, sort of like a militaristic dude. 
And then you'll also see that, and this is a weird one, I have never actually had this one before. Uh, Andy enjoys the feeling of freedom that comes from being nude. He can handle, he can handle clothing, but will be happier without it. So, there's that. Um, there are things like armor in this game, and I'm not sure if they'll add to that or not, but we'll see. But, uh, now that I've kind of gone over what all these things mean, let's choose a couple characters. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, you can also change their names out. So their middle name is their nickname, and it's how you identify them. So I don't bother with the other with changing the other two. I just change the middle name because that's the only thing that appears over their heads. I like to keep it at default, but if I have to change them, I just usually change the middle one. All right. So to start off, I usually like to start off with uh, someone that's good at growing, someone who's good at mining and construction, and shooting. Uh, for me, the other things, if I can get two in one, that would be great. Cooking's a good skill to have. Uh, melee, I don't really see a point in that skill at all, even though it, it's kind of good for when people go on rampages, but you guys will get to that in the future. Um, medicine, I don't really worry too much about that. Uh, crafting, don't worry really too much about that either. Uh, Alright, so... Uh, Let's just look at these other characters that we have. This guy is incapable of dumb labor and skilled labor. So, uh, and he's incapable of scary things. So, I don't like this dude at all. He'd be a really great warden, and uh, he's pretty good at shooting. But I'm just gonna randomize this guy. Uh, he's incapable of a lot of things. I don't like having people that are incapable of stuff. All right, this dude, he is incapable of nothing, which is good. Um, Let's see what he's. This guy has a uh, construction, and he's good at research. So, uh, let's see. He is. He's good at. Sh he has a passion for shooting. This guy's still better at shooting. No. Um. He is. Hmm. I think I can do better. Let's look. Okay, this guy's get great at construction. He's great at growing. That's good because this guy can't grow. He's good at shooting. So that is good. He's incapable of caring in social things, so... I think I'm gonna keep this dude. I like him. Uh, let's see if we can get something for him. Oh, I forgot to change. Look at the first one, but oh well. Um, incapable of plant work and mining. He's a fast walker, so he walks 16% faster. Hmm... Yes, medicine. Okay, artistic. We don't care about that. He's incapable of mining and growing, though. I don't like that. Um, he's got zero into research, he's got 13 in melee. Let's see if we can do something else. Nope. Uh, whoops, okay, what did I do there? Um, uh, construction, he's good at construction. Da -da 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 -da. Social. He's good at crafting. Alright, I think I'll keep this guy. Oh, he's incapable of plant work. Never mind, okay. Let's find someone that's good at plant work. Okay, this guy's good at growing. He's incapable of dumb labor and cleaning. Um, right, so this guy will be the only one that can clean for us, but that... Um, I don't know. Let's see if we can find something better. Capable of research and crafting. He can do everything else, though. He can grow. Mm. Alright, let's do this guy. He's a jogger and he's an optimist. That's really great. Optimistic people can't... Uh, let's see... Is naturally optimistic about life. It's hard to get her down. So that's good. I'm gonna keep her. Alright, so let's start the game. <laughs> Finally. And uh, let's see what happens. So it'll generate the map. And this is a little bit bigger map than usual. Than I usually do, so... Uh, Let's just wait. Okay, here we go. The three of you awake in your cryos. Cryo. To sleep. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown real world. As pieces of the shredded ship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So, this is basically the default intro to every game. So, uh, I usually skip that after the first time I read that, so I just read that for you guys. Alright. 
So uh, let's start with the uh, the heads up display. So uh, you got if you are unfamiliar with games like this, like I was, I did not know. I've never played games like this before, like Dwarf Fortress or Sims. Never played those. This is actually my first game like this. So, uh, but I have been playing it for a while, so I think I'm pretty good at the wheel. So let's start with the heads-up display. Um, this is basically just the time. How many days have passed since you landed? Uh, since your arrival. So there are 15 days in each month, which is kind of strange. I wonder if that changes. I have no idea. Basically, this is how uh, how the sky looks. So, how what kind of day it is? It's a clear day, so there are no penalties or modifiers. Sometimes it'll rain. Sometimes it'll be a thunderstorm. Sometimes there's a solar eclipse. Sometimes there's solar flares. So, uh, yeah, um, this is what, as you can see, my uh, people here aren't moving or anything. So. Uh, these are like the pause on pause buttons as you can see if I unpause them they'll start moving that's just fast forward stuff like that um, so uh, this toggles between the home uh, automatically adding the home region to new areas of construction I keep that on all the time uh, we'll get to that later on what that is uh, toggles visibility zones uh, no idea what that is keep it on don't worry about it I don't <laughs> Um, okay, overview. Probably the most important thing of this game. Uh, manual priorities. Um, basically, what this does is uh, it just prioritizes them automatically. I like to keep it on uh, manual, or not manual, uh, just set. Um, basically, this is what your people will do. Uh, there's different categories to everything. Uh, so if you see that one of your characters is uh, dying in the hospital and no one's helping him, this is probably why. Or, like, as you can see, this guy, he can't be doctoring, so he won't do that. Uh, but if you see someone's dying, you might want to go up here. If no one's doing anything about it, just click it. If they aren't growing any or mining, crafting, this is why. Uh, let's go to the factions tab. These are other factions in the world. So as you can see, these are uh, how they feel about you. If it's in green, that means they are good to you. If they're hostile towards you, they will attack you. Just because it's negative doesn't mean that they will attack you. They'll just, uh, they just don't like you. So if you try contacting them in the game, they'll hang up the phone. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is the world. I've seen this before. Nothing really much to it, just some information here that adds to the game. Uh, let's see what else is here. History. Stuff. Uh, it's basically just wealth. Wealth and items. Wealth and buildings. So, uh, just graphs and stuff. This will progress as you keep moving forward through the game. Uh, statistics. Um, just statistics to the game. Nothing much. Basically, the two your two most important tabs are. This is your most important tab by far. This is your next important. So yeah. Uh, one thing I forgot. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but if they're in the green, they'll visit you, and if you attack them or arrest them, they'll become hostile towards you, and then slowly that'll increase. Uh, occasionally, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you can bribe people that are already friends with you and they'll become even more friendlier with you. Next tab, a research tab. So uh, as you can see here it says until you build a research bench your colonists will not actually be able to research however you can still look and choose the research projects now. So this is the research tabs this is what uh, things you have done what things you haven't done. Um, this is uh, research so uh, the things that you research, they'll basically allow you to do other things. If you have this game, you can just look through it, hover, click on them, see what they do. So this this research, uh, miners' picks are 20% more effective. So this would be great if you're into mining metals out and stuff. Um, so I'm not really going to go through every one of them. That'll take too much time. Alright, uh, let's go to Wiki. This will take you to your internet browser. 
doesn't really do too much but uh sorry about the black screens that just clicked on that by accident so it took me out I don't know if you guys saw those or not but anyway that's what the wiki does if you have anything about the game just look it up on the wiki click on that button menu menu to the game pretty straightforward options load game save game back to game blah, blah, blah. quit the game you guys know <laughs> I'm sure you guys have already been to a main menu before all right so if I hover over the tab over over any tile so this game is divided into tiles so if I click on something and I don't know why it's not clicking for me uh, shouldn't really matter hold on uh, yeah okay so if I click here or you guys saw that so if I uh, let's just set an area to just for a second just to show you guys so alright never mind it doesn't do anything okay um, I'll just get rid of that later in between uh, episodes but anyway if you guys can see in my left hand left bottom left hand corner it it will say uh, brush 60 percent grown soil and then it'll say the walk speed 87 percent and what the light level is so uh, if you if I go over a tree here it'll say oak tree and 71 percent grown if I click on it, it'll give me more details, but once it's 100% grown, that's the optimal time to harvest stuff. Like berries, uh, right here, berries, and stuff like that. Um, it'll also say the walk speed, pretty straightforward, how fast your people can walk. Uh, they'll have modifiers to that, like one of my guys is a jogger, I think, so uh, they'll move around pretty quickly. And it also says the light level, and it's dark. Now it's dark here simply because it's dark out and it likes to start you off at uh, zero hours. So I would, I'd assume that's like uh, that's twelve o'clock. Yeah, that's like yeah, that's like twelve o'clock at night. So uh, anyway, then if you go uh, keep continuing with this side. Excuse me again. Um, it'll say your basic stuff like it's the oct architecture tab so what you want to build uh, this will uh, build areas so the, one of the first things that you want to do is start off with making a zone I like to cover the zones first because those are the most essential parts basically if you uh, make a stockpile say uh, over here let's make a little one that is where all your people will dump all the valuables that you need uh, so like uh, like silver, uh, metals. These uh, this is actually food. Those are MREs or something like that. You know, ready to eat. Um, health kits, uh, wood and guns, stuff like that. You can uh, if you click on it, it'll say storage. Now you can actually manually select what you want in there. You can either have groups of items. So it says items. If I click in here. Um, actually, let's just click on the weapons. If I click on the weapons, as you can see, if I do the drop down menu, there are a lot of weapons in this game. So it'll automatically select every weapon. Now, if I deselect it, uh, it'll say all the weapons will go off. But if I want to choose maybe specific weapons to put in there, it'll give you the half a circle, which means that some items are in, some items will go in there, some items won't. I usually don't like to put weapons in my. I usually like to make separate stockpiles for different things. So, uh, yeah. Alright, there's also the priority thing on top, which will show... Um, basically, if I say have two stockpiles, and one of them has a higher priority, like critical, and one has normal priority, then the one with critical will get filled up first with the items, unless it can't be filled up with that item. Like, if I have guns in one of mine and food in the other one, then this one will get filled up with food uh, really quick. Uh, well, it'll get filled up with food, and that one will get filled up with guns. But if this one, say, has food and guns, and this one has guns, and this one's priority is critical, and the other one's priority is normal, then it'll fill up this one first with the weapons, and this one after this one's filled up with weapons, after it can't hold any more weapons. Now, items do stack in this, so, uh, as you can see, if I uh, 
click on this metal here. It says metal times 40. Weapons do not stack, uh, so you can also make uh, medikits stack. So the only thing that doesn't stack so far is just clothing and weaponry. So uh, it makes sense. All right. Um, then there's a dumping stockpile, which uh, basically for useless stuff. Uh, like rocks and boulders, stuff like that. You can also change what goes in it and what doesn't. So you can actually have a dumping stockpile, but not have it be for dumping. Uh, so and then there's also a growing zone. So if I select a growing zone, say so I select a growing zone right here, and I set what is growing, you can set different stuff to grow. I usually like to keep it on potatoes because potatoes are good food, and uh, I don't know, I. I haven't actually tried any other things out, but I will in this Let's Play, so, uh, you can grow trees and stuff, uh, yeah, oak trees, dandelions, daylily, don't know what those are, figure it out. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Then you can add a home region. Uh, so far I have no home regions because I have not built any structures like walls or doors or anything, so, uh, uh no home region yet, but as I start making uh, structures and stuff it will make a home region automatically that's why you keep that thing on right over there uh, whoops uh, then, so basically there's different categories for what to build orders basically tell your people to do stuff like harvest stuff but you gotta remember if you set an order and no one can do it in the overview they won't do it anyway just because you order them to do it you gotta have them checked off and only the people that are checked off on doing that type of thing will actually do it. So yeah. Also, uh, one more thing I should mention before I end off the episode. The top left hand corner, excuse me. Uh, this will show you all your items that are in your stockpile. So if the, an item isn't in your stockpile, it won't show up over here. So far we only have silver and we have zero because nothing is in our stockpile. Uh, it'll show stuff like everything that you have. MREs, different kind of food, medic kits, wood. Uh, if you have stuff in the dumping pile, it won't show up here. So that's the whole point of the dumping pile so it doesn't show up. Um, I don't think weapons will show up and clothing won't show up because they're not stackable, but anything that stacks will show up there. So uh, you don't have to keep looking at your stockpile, just look at that. <laughs> Sometimes I look at the stockpile anyway because I forget, but uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, so as, you, as your colonists uh, do stuff, they will put stuff in the piles and this area will grow. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was basically a tutorial introduction to the game. Next episode, we will start playing these guys. So uh, yeah, so I'll catch you guys next time.